there we go. Increasing, decreasing first derivative test. All right, so, so far, what we, or what we did out of this chapter so far is we talked about how to find a maximum, how to find a minimum. And I think it was Sophia yesterday that mentioned, uh, or she brought up the fact that the derivative would be zero at a maximum and, or zero at a minimum, right? So first of all, think about this. If something is at its maximum, what is happening? All right, uh, I'll tell you what, let's look at it. Let me give you an example here. Let's look at uh, negative x squared. I don't know why that made noise. Um, so look, is this a maximum or a minimum? Maximum. What is the function doing as we go from left to right? What is the function doing until it gets to the maximum? It's increasing. And then what's it doing after the maximum? Decreasing. Okay. So what does that have to do with derivatives? If a function is increasing, what's true about its derivative? So what does that mean the derivative is? Let me, all right, let me put it this way. Derivative is what in geometry? Of a slope. Slope. What's the slope on this side? Positive. Positive. Okay, so, uh, so that means then the slope is, positive here, the slope is negative here, and then what is it right here then? Zero, okay, and then the opposite is going to be true for our, um, for our, uh, for, a, for a minimum, okay? So, that's, this is basically, eh, and then the first derivative test, we'll get to that, but this is kind of the first part of this section, the first half of this section, so to speak, is just recognizing um, recognizing that, that, that thing right there. Uh, so we're going to talk about, we're going to figure out where functions are increasing and decreasing. So let's pull up here our book, library, start the adoption process, right there, see? Access the ebook, and let's look at some examples of finding increasing and decreasing intervals. Um, so we're in three point three. Let's look at the exercises for it. Um, so I'm going to start here with uh, number five. We're going to start just so we kind of um, that we can make sure we can basically understand this. This is more kind of practice before we get to the quote unquote real problems. But here it says use the graph to estimate the open intervals on which the function is increasing or de decreasing. Okay, and um, we're going to just pay attention to those directions first. Okay, uh, so. You guys look at there and tell me where do you think this thing is increasing and where is it decreasing? Um, so. Okay, left of negative one is correct, but we're going to write this in what's called interval notation. So that's going to be like the parentheses and the brackets. Right, right. So this thing would be. Uh, so this is, uh, let me go ahead and write this down. This is 3.3, increasing, decreasing functions, uh, first derivative test. And so this is uh, number five where we are, uh, yeah, first here, uh, this thing is increasing. And uh, so, yeah, how would I write that? To the left of negative one. That'd be from what to what? Yep. Negative infinity to negative one. This that is where this thing is increasing. And then where is it decreasing? Well, in because it's it, well, it stops increasing. There's nowhere else it's increasing. 
And then where is it decreasing? Negative 1 to infinity. Makes sense? Lock on. Okay, let's look at one more of those examples. Let's look at one more. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Let's look at number eight here. Yeah, we're going to have to do this without a graph. So number eight. Again, let's figure out where this thing's increasing. And let's figure out where it's decreasing. Do that with school. Okay, so increasing. Where what is once where where is it where is this thing increasing? Negative one to zero. Okay, so look right here. From negative one until zero, this thing is going up. So negative one to zero. And how do I write you said this? Okay, how do I write and from? Union. Uh-huh. And where'd you say? Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, we can assume here that this thing has got like the little arrows on it. Um, so yeah, from one, so negative one to zero, one to infinity. Again, from one, and as this thing goes, as x goes to infinity, y keeps going up forever. So that's where it's increasing. Where is it decreasing? It's all right. I mean, you got there. Oh, yeah. I did forget. I just sat on. And, uh, Uno. And, uh, Union. And, uh, Ocho. Are we ever going to end this? When we're, like, raising this, there will probably, there won't ever be a time Great. Hey, everybody listen. This is this is important. Very good. There's a reason they said open interval, and yet, I'll be honest, when I read those directions, it's like, well, that you don't even have to say that. So what he said there is, well, let me, let me kind of refine my answer. So basically, usually, pretty much with any typical function, there will never be a use for a bracket because if it's going from increasing, or rather decreasing to increasing, it's got to hit zero, which means that we're never going to include the point. However, I can think that I can come up with a graph where we would include the point. So um, let me show you an example. Um, well, let's go with. Oh, you know what? I can do it. I can do it with. Good grief! That was loud. I can't do it with that calculator. I can do it with this calculator. Um, yeah. Here, here's a graph. Now that blue line right there is not supposed to be showing up, okay? But if you have what's a, you have a, if you have a piecewise function, then this thing would be increasing from uh, z uh, rather from two to infinity, and we would write it as whoops uh, two to infinity. Whoops, good grief, James. However. Your basic point, though, for like a, a continuous, regular, normal function, you're absolutely right. It would have to be something weird, like some kind of piecewise function. So there, I we we could do it, but yeah, it's going to be something weird. So or uh, greatest integer function. I don't remember off the top of my head. 
Okay, so um, try to trying to do this where I can. And I may just have to do this. Sorry, people that are watching. I have to do it like this. Um, from here. If we talked about this segment. That's supposed to be an open circle there at the end. This would be uh, negative 6 to negative 3, bracket on negative 6, parenthesis on negative 3. The bracket lets you know that you include that number. So this is all the numbers between negative 6 and negative 3, including negative 6, excluding negative 3. So the parenthesis means it's not included, uh, or you know, everything up until there. The bracket means you do include it. Which is why when we write infinity, we actually put a parenthesis because you never actually get to it. You're not actually including infinity, but it's all the numbers up to infinity. Up to it's infinity. Not over it's supposed to be, oh. yeah. Correct. Okay, okay. Well, so here's the thing. Um, it, uh, again, to uh, bounds is bounces question. Um, unless it's something weird or like a piece like anything that you're going to graph on your calculator, it's going to be parentheses. Yeah. I don't know why I drew those. All right. Let's ask if there's any other questions on homework. In my brain for just a second, I was like, we're doing the uh, homework from yesterday. Thank you for asking. Okay, now we're going to actually do some, uh, we're going to do this without a calculator. Okay, now this is one of those things where, remember, on the test, yeah, you'll have your gra graphing calculator. Yes, you can look at it and see it, but you still got to show the work to do it. So you're going to be like, well, I can just look at my calculator. I, hey, I just teach calculus. I just teach what they tell me to teach. Okay, so um, you've got to be able to do this by hand the point so yeah you can use a calculator to check your work and all that and that's that's great and fine and dandy um so uh, away we go let's do number 12 here from the uh again from the homework part of this um oh whoopsie uh-oh i forgot to write down the uh i forgot to put that in the notes Somebody, does anybody happen to have down what five and eighths answers were? I think it was five and eight. Say I messed up. Uh, negative one to zero union, one to infinity. Okay. All right, got it. And then the other is the opposite. Uh, negative infinity to negative 1, union, not 11, union with a 0 to 1. Okay. And this is... functions, first derivative test, okay, all right, let me throw that in the uh, notes, and then we'll do, we'll start doing examples, actual big time examples.
video for all this, but no. You know what? Yeah, they can suffer through it. You guys are having to suffer through it. So, for April. Alright, there we go. Um, So, what did I just say? Number 12 we're going to do. And it is this. Start with a, a bit of an easier one. I'm going to call it f of x instead of h of x, just because we're kind of more used to that. And again, the directions here were to figure out where this thing is increasing and decreasing. Um, this isn't that bad. It's really not. Okay, um, This is not that bad. So uh, what we're going to do here then is we're going to... Um, let me kind of, so that you guys can hopefully, this will help you remember the steps to do here. Let's let's remember again, what, I, what did I mention earlier about increasing and decreasing? Things switch from increasing to decreasing when at the, z, at what zeros? You're right. At the slopes of zeros, which in calculus would be, well, the derivatives are zeros. And it, it is, back, no, you're right, it is maximum and minimum. That's right, that's right. So we need to figure out where this thing has maxima and minima. And then we need to look on each side and see what? Is it increasing, decreasing? Right, and so we're going to tie all that information together, what we were doing a couple of days ago, what we're doing today. So, again, what we're going to do here for starters is we're going to take the derivative and we're going to set it equal to zero. We're going to find, oh, we're going to find a critical point, y'all. We're finding critical points. Wow. What is the derivative of 12x minus x cubed? 12 minus 3x to the second. Mm -hmm. And again, we're going to set that equal to 0. How do I solve that bad boy? Okay. Negative three. Yep. That's negative. Yeah. All right. That is, what that is used for is mainly in formulas where if you see that, that means whatever sign was there, you flipped it. So if you see a minus or a plus, it means whatever was positive, you make it negative. Whatever was negative, you make it positive. That's all that means. So it is a, it is a sign that's used, yeah. All right, so x equals plus or minus 2. That is, uh, that, that's the, uh, um, those are the critical points. So, um, Remember, now 3.1, we were asking, are these maximum or minimum values? We also had endpoints. Now, that, that really doesn't change anything here, okay? We're not going to worry about the endpoints part on this. But what we're going to do here is I do know that positive 2 and negative 2, it may not happen, okay? I'm going to go ahead and tell you, sometimes it doesn't happen. But typically, if you've got critical points, you're at critical points, you're either going from increasing to decreasing or you're going from decreasing to increasing, so here's the way that I set this up. It's going to look a little messy here on math type instead of me like just drawing it on the board. Uh, but here's what I do is I set up kind of like a little number line, basically, something like this. Hold on before you write it down, though. And what I put on this number line is I put the negative 2 and the positive 2. That's, ah, maybe that's a bit too long. Something like that, though. So I, I've got, got my little number line, and I've got negative 2 and positive 2 in that number line. What does this do like a... It's like a number line. It's like a, you know, like a... So that's what it got by that step. Ah, it don't matter. This is just a visual to kind of help us keep up with some things. It, it And also, this will make sense at the end of the problem, okay? So negative 2 and positive 2. I'm going to put that on the number line. 
And then I'm going to pick numbers in all three intervals that are up here. You see, all right, so everybody look up here for just a second. You see, this is an interval. So to the left of negative 2, this is an interval that I'm interested in. To the right of positive 2, and this is an interval that I'm interested, interested in between negative 2 and positive 2. And again, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick numbers in these intervals. What is, if I want to guess what the easiest number would be to work with to the left of negative 2? Negative 3, that sounds pretty good to me. So I'm going to write that down kind of like right here. Something Again, it doesn't have to look exactly, what I, like, exactly like what I have here. It doesn't matter. And then I'm going to pick a number between negative 2 and positive 2. What's the easiest number to plug into anything? Zero. Zero. And then I'm going to pick a number to the right of positive 2. Three. Okay. <laughs> there, there it is. Where's this thing increasing? Uh, here. Okay. Um. All right. Now, let's. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take these three numbers. And we're going to plug them into the derivative, into the first derivative. And again, guys, just follow me here for a second. Here in a minute, this will all come together, and you'll see, oh, that, that's why we're doing what we're doing. So for right now, just kind of follow along with me. But again, we're going to plug them into the first derivative, these three numbers. So I'm going to take... Oopsie. Negative 3, put it in for x. I'm going to take 0, put it in for x. And positive 3 and put it in for x. can go ahead and write down what they're equal to. However, I actually, just be careful out there. I don't care exactly what they're equal to. There's only one thing I care about. Does anybody know what I care about these numbers? Are they positive or negative? That's exactly right. So, I don't actually, I see that this is going to be 12 minus 27. I don't care what that's actually equal to. All I care about is that that's negative. And again, we'll talk about why that matters here in a second. And again, on this one right here, I'm not going to even bother writing down that it's equal to positive 12. All I care about is that it's positive. And then down here, all I care about is that it's negative. Now, you can still put those in your calculator. You can get the answer. But sometimes these are going to be like really long. And, and all you care about is, are we getting a positive number or a negative number? Well, so it's decreasing, increasing. Uh, so all right, so here, so so here's here's what here's why I did all that. Now I'm going to go back to my little number line, and you see here at negative three we got a negative number. Well, at zero we got whoopsie. Whoop. At zero, we got a positive number. And at three, we got a negative number. So what does that tell me? That tells me that, and I'm, I'm going to write it down here at the bottom here in just a second, but I'm going to pull up a, a new little window right here just so you can kind of see all this at once. So... Where is this thing increasing? See this right here? Again, this was first derivative. It's first a derivative is slope. Where, do, where slope is positive, something's increasing, right? So check this out. Since at zero, 
this thing was positive, you know what that means? That means everything between here, the derivative has to be positive. So where is this thing increasing? From negative 2 to positive 2. And then where is it decreasing? Well, it's decreasing to the left of negative 2. It's decreasing to the right of positive 2. So how would I write that? Again, I'll put all this together in like one screen here. Or, uh, huh? Uh, I don't know. I thought. Uh -huh. This guy's time traveling. Now, let me say something here. Watch this, because this is this is really important. You might say, wait a second, though. You just pick there's infinitely many numbers between negative two and positive two. What if it's increasing at zero and decreasing at positive one? How do I know that that cannot happen? How do I know that every single one of these all have to be positive? Because here's the deal. If it did switch from positive to negative somewhere through here, it would have to hit zero, which would mean I would have a critical point. Yeah, so there's no way that it changes anything other than that. So, again, you can pick – I could have picked um, negative 1.7. I could have picked uh, 0.11111114115. doesn't matter. I would have got a positive number. Okay? Yeah, you can have you can have none. You can have you can have infinitely many critical points. Somebody, please tell me an example of a function pi. that has it, huh? Well, pi is not a function. I'm talking about an actual f of x equals uh, sine, sine x because it goes uh, maximum minimum, maximum minimum, maximum minimum over and over for all of infinity for all of eternity. So you can have anyways to your point. Uh, I see what I did there. Point. Um, yeah, you can uh, you can have any number of critical points. Don't you have to have Correct. I do have a neurologist appointment. Okay. What's that? Huh? It is scheduled for like, y'all's is May 1st or May 8th? May 1st is when y'all's is. Isn't that when our exam is? Ah, I, mean, I forgot about that. So, I don't know, maybe exam will be the day before or day after, but yeah. I'll be honest, I completely forgot about that. Now I'm the one that scheduled both of those things. Sorry. Yeah, those kids don't need bad, you're right. All right, so now we're going to do numero 14 -o. y equals x plus 9 over x. And again, looking for increasing and decreasing, okay? And again, we're going to find critical points. Because critical points, um, and, and uh, yeah, critical points are at least places we want to check to see. Uh, again, so hey, I'm going to tell you guys, there's going to be some times where when we do our little number line, it's going to be positive and positive. So what does that mean? It's just increasing and increasing. So like, there's, so sometimes it's not going to work out like it did. That last one, it was changing every single time. It doesn't always work out that way. Um... So dy dx, uh, at least mentally, what I need to, going back to my original function, what I need to think of that is, is I'm taking the derivative at this point. Yes. Now you might say, well, we could just use quotient rule. 
Yeah, you can. You can also go bang your head against the asphalt, but that doesn't sound fun either. My cousin was very stubborn. And uh, this was back when I was probably eight. He was probably about six. He was staying with me and my dad one day. And my dad got tired of his stubbornness and was like, because we lived out in the country, and he was like, go butt your head against the road. Just like, you know, like trying to tell him, because he kept saying he would do, you know, that kid went out there, and I remember he butted his head against the road. (laughs) No, he just had a control problem, self-control problem. Like he would, he would do whatever it took to let you know you can't tell him what to do. And so since he knew my dad was really didn't actually want him to do that, he was like, okay, I'll go do it. It was like reverse, reverse psychology. Yeah. All right. What's the derivative of X? Oh, no. What next? Yep. Now, I need to set that thing equal to zero. Oh, all right. Technically, on the last problem, I didn't mention where is the derivative undefined. Why did I just skip that? That was the... Yeah, with a polynomial, it's always defined. Um, this one, though, I'm going to check that, okay? So... Here, I'm going to see where uh, dy dx is 0, and I also want to talk about where dy dx is um, undefined. So, when is it equal to 0? Well, we're going to set this thing equal to 0. Hey, y'all tell me, how in the world do I solve that thing? Better go get a ninth grader. They'll know how to do this. All right. For real though, any thoughts of how to solve that? Yeah, so I'm going to, what'd you say? Root of 1 to the sine of 2 pi x. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to do a couple things here. First of all, I'm going to rewrite this uh, negative 9 thing. I'm going to rewrite that as negative 9 over x squared. And you're like, well, you just rewrote it. I did because I took the derivative. But since I'm solving an equation, equations are much easier to solve when you don't have negative exponents. So I'm going to rewrite that that way. And yes, I'm going to take the one to the other side. Yeah, I get that. And that, that's the reason I'm kind of mentioning now is, is when it, if you're trying to solve an equation... If you've got negative exponents, you better rewrite that. You can't, it's, it's, or it's very difficult to solve it if it has negative exponents. Okay. Um, yeah, cross multiply. You can, by the way, you could divide by negative, make it look a little nicer first, but I'm just going to cross multiply, and I at least in my head need to think of this as uh, negative 1 over 1. So when we cross multiply we get negative x squared equals negative 9. Now we have to divide by negative before I can take the square root. So x squared equals 9. Yes, positive three. Did you hear that, Will? So, plus or minus three. All right, got two critical points. Let's see if there are any more critical points. I bet there are. Especially since I went through the trouble of uh, mentioning this. So again, uh, this equ- this uh, one minus nine over x squared. Uh, th- th- again, I- I'm I'm not solving it right here. I'm asking: Is there any number that I could put in for x that would make that undefined? 
x equals 0 is correct. Correct. Well, when you plug 0 in right here, you get an undefined number. And 1 minus an undefined number will itself be undefined. look at the denominator and see where is that denominator equal to zero. Yeah. You check that. You also check where square roots would be negative. What, what would make this thing negative? Um, so we got three critical points. So those are, so, that, so that's what I'm going to set up my little number line with, okay? So let's make our number line. Uh, negative 3, 0, positive 3. Last time we had uh, two critical points, didn't we? Yeah, this one has 3. Now be careful. Um, a... So, you know, sometimes in math you'll find a pattern because it usually works, and so you try to make it work every, or you assume it works every time. A lot of times, guys, a lot of times it will be increasing, decreasing, increasing, decreasing. Like it'll switch back and forth, and so you you and your brain will go, there's no need for me to work on these other parts because I, I just know it's going to switch every time. Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. So I, I just, I'm just saying that as we work on these problems, if you and your brain are like, Ah, I'll just do, I'll just plug in one of these numbers. Just go ahead and plug them all in because you need to check all of them. Okay, so, um, what be some, what be something to the left of negative four? I mean, I'm sorry, negative three. Yeah, negative four. Okay. Between negative three and zero. Negative 1, I think, probably the easiest to plug in. Uh, 0 and 3. Yep. And then over here, 4. Now, what do I have to do with those four numbers? Plug them into the first derivative. And, and again, since I'm going to be plugging them in and figuring out what they're equal to, I'm going to plug them into this version of the first derivative, not the one with the negative exponent. So I'm going to plug them into that version, and that'll be a lot easier to work with. Absolutely. Uh, but I would want you to write down, you know, what, what you're doing. So f of negative 4 is this. Um, I need to do that for negative 1, positive 1, and positive 4. All right, tell you what, I'm going to try to save a little bit of room here. I'll do it this way. Maybe? Four, negative one, positive one, positive one, and positive four. Whew. Okay, I was gonna I was just gonna say here, um so no, that would be positive. Yeah. So when you so plugging in negative four, I got one minus nine sixteenths, uh, which is seven sixteenths. But that's again, all I really care about is I plug that in the calculator, and I get something that's positive. Um, one minus nine over. Negative 1 squared, that's 1 minus 9, that's negative. Negative. 
And then we've got one mile. And again, here, you notice here how you're like, oh, positive, negative. I bet the next one's positive. Well, we got one minus nine. That's negative. And then here, 1 minus 9 sixteenths again, so that's positive. So we got positive, negative, negative, positive. And I'll go up to my little number line right here and put those in. Positive. Negative, negative, positive. And that lets me know I've got increasing, decreasing, decreasing, increasing. I'm, I'm actually I'm going to pull it up here in a second, and uh, I, I'm going to start with looking at what the actual answers are, and then you'll, we're going to look at this because I, I wanted to want to show you that um, increasing. That's I'm going to go ahead. And that's the easier part here. Increasing. Where's this thing increasing? Negative. All right. Now let me tell you here. Really easy error is sometimes students will say negative infinity to negative four. So they look at the, you see what I'm saying there though? Like you see the negative four, that's a really easy mistake, okay? But yeah, it's negative infinity till negative three. Negative four is just what we um, uh, picked to uh, test. So negative infinity to negative three, where else? Three to infinity. Okay, that's where it's increasing. All right, now, There we go. Decreasing. Don't write down what I'm about to write down. This is wrong. A tempting thing to do would be to say negative 3 to positive 3. Because it's surely decreasing in all those numbers, right? It's decreasing on the left is 0. It's decreasing on the right is 0. It must be decreasing from negative 3 to 3. Can anybody tell me why that's actually not correct? Yeah, so look, this point zero, if we look back at the original problem, why, so nine over zero, what is that? Undefined, okay? And so since it's undefined, actually, this function does not exist at zero, which means it can't be decreasing or increasing at zero. So where is this thing decreasing? Negative three to zero, Union with zero to three, and it, and this is where Allie, you're uh, asking earlier. This is why those parentheses are so important. Is that lets me know I'm not including zero. I'm not including zero. So that is probably the trickiest part of this particular problem. All right, let me put that here. Pause this for a second. And we're back. So, numero 13 -o. X square root 16 minus X squared. <laughs> oh, boy. Anybody know what, what we got going on here? There's two things that we both that we all love. Two kind of rules that we're going to be using. Yes. Chain and product. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah. You know. Now, before I even get started, since I'm doing derivatives, you know what I'm going to rewrite this thing as? I'm going to rewrite that, uh, yeah, that square root as just to the one half power. Okay. What's that? You love this? Yeah. And you wish Will and Sophia were here to enjoy it. I agree. 
Okay. So, product rule or chain rule first? Product rule, yes, because I've got something with an X times something with an X. I've got to do product rule. Product rule says we do second thing. Okay, all that stuff to the one-half power. Times the derivative of the first thing, and the derivative of X is 1. Plus the first thing, X. Times the derivative of the second. Oh, boy. Chain rule. All right. Bring the one-half out front. That's right. All this business is left alone at first. Well, what to what power here? Negative one half, and then, like you said, times the derivative of the inside. That's right. Man, we just keep doing the same stuff over and over. It's called a good time. All right, this part times one, so it's just itself. And since I'm going to be doing um, some uh, setting equal to zero and all that, I'm going to rewrite that as square root. Again, I rewrote it originally just because I was having to take the derivative. Now that I'm done with the derivative stuff, I'm going to put it back in that kind of form because the, the algebra is easier that way. Okay, I've got a positive thing times a positive thing times a positive thing. I know it's the negative one-half power. That doesn't mean that it is negative, though times a negative thing, so we've got minus. I've got a one-half and a two that's being multiplied together. Can, can, cancel. Can, can, cancel. X times X, so I've got X squared. Now, you might leave yourself some room here. I'm about to do a little bit more, okay? You see that this is to the negative one-half? So I'm going to write this as x squared over, because it's negative, right there. And the one-half means square root. Well, and I was going to say, and again, and I'm not making light of it, but like, Calculus wasn't that bad, but this algebra, man, it's some, it's some messy algebra. So, again, what I did here was I had one thing that was negative and all this stuff being multiplied, so minus. The one-half and the two, they cancel. X times X, X squared. And then since this whole thing is to a negative power, I'm going to put it on the bottom of the fraction. And the one-half means square root. Now, we're doing critical points. Oops. So, I'm interested in when the derivative is zero. I'm interested in where the derivative might be undefined. With uh, this right here being the derivative. So, let's take that thing and set it equal to zero. We have done this a couple of times before, different numbers probably, but I've got something weird minus some weird fraction equals zero. Any, anybody know how we start to solve that bad boy? And it is, I promise I'm not getting on to you, but I'll say I have, I've mentioned this because like this is something that's going to come up over and over. Or it's going to come up every once in a while anyways. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take, yep, yep, that's right. 
I'm going to take this one thing over to the other side and make it positive so that I can do what? Oh, my bad. Yeah. So that I can, I think somebody may have said it, so I can do what? Cross multiply. Can't, if that was times between them, I could cancel. So that's that equals between them. I know. I know. Thank you. I felt like he was the problem there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Women. Since we're at TCTS, or TCTS, well, T for cross, and C for cross. cross. Who in this year chose Spanish Spain? My mom, I taught here for years, and anytime she would introduce me to somebody, she would say, because, uh, again, my mom, I love her. She was, And I'm, I'm saying this because I don't want you to think I'm making fun, but she, she, was, she had a little bit of a mental issue, and she, she had the heart. She could never remember TCTS. It was always, he teaches out there at the TPTS. And I was like, oh, that's close enough. Yeah, it's, I'm saying that's a common. Oh, no, it's not. Yeah, TPTS. It, it, it's, it sounds better. I say, but I'm saying it, it's more natural coming off the tongue. All right, so let's cross multiply. Square root times square root. Since it's the same square root, and well, cancel meaning, what are we left with? Yes. Yeah, we're left with what's inside there. So 16 minus x squared equals x squared. Nope. So take the x squared over to the other side. Whoops. 16 equals 2x squared. Divide by 2. And so we've got x squared equals 8. Yep. Now, if this were geometry, if it were trigonometry, it, it, depending on the class, I would say, actually, you kind of need to simplify that square root of 8 into 2 square root 2. 2 square root 2, that's exactly right. Good. Um, however, does anybody know why I don't care? Yeah, yeah, exactly. The uh, eventual answer is just about increasing and decreasing. Whatever. Wait, how do you do 2 square root 2? Sure, yeah. So I can think about the fact that 8 is 4 times 2, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's the same thing as 2 square root 2. Ah, 2 plus or minus the square root of 8? How about that? 2 square root 2. All right, I've got two critical points. Let, but we need to see, is there anywhere that the derivative is undefined? Oh, yeah. <gasps> Whoa, y'all got that so quickly. Let's talk about how you did it. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know what that was, sorry. Um, thank you. <laughs> Where is the derivative undefined? It's undefined when the bottom of a fraction equals zero. Here's a fraction. Let's set the bottom of that fraction equal to zero. Well, if the square root of 16 minus x squared equals zero, 16 minus x squared equals zero, so 16 is equal to x squared, and as some of you had already figured out, yeah, that means plus or minus 4, there are two more critical points. We got four critical points.
I am serious. Don't call me Charlotte. Did I swear? What? It's a, I know you did. It's a quote from the 1980 movie Airplane, where somebody walks up to him. It's a parody, or it's a, you know. Anyways, he's like, I love it. He's like, that's a great movie. He's like, surely you can't be serious. He's like, I am serious. I am serious. Don't call me Shirley. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. Don't, don't call me Shirley. Which one? Well, if you had to carry whoever and whoever, you, yeah, yeah, that's good stuff. Uh, anytime you've got a fraction in a derivative, where that derivative is undefined, it's going to be where the bottom of a fraction equals zero. And so, yeah, that's what we did there. All right, let's make our little number line. <laughs> All right, square root of 8, I need to know whether I'm going to put negative 4 first or negative square root of 8 first. Calculator, just for fun, though, how much is the square root of 8, Why roughly? Put the square root of 8 first? What? what? You were saying positive 4. No, I said po or I may have said, if I said square root of 4, I meant just 4. Um, square root of 8 is really close to square root of 9. Square root of 9 is 3, right? Now, again, you can use calculator, but that would let me know that square root of 8 is about 3. So I need to put, that lets me know then I need to put negative 4 first. Then I'll put negative square root of 8. Then positive square root of 8. And positive 4. And now I'll, I'll need numbers between the numbers. Or numbers in the different intervals here. Uh, yep. Negative 5. I would use negative three. Good. Um, yeah. Uh, yep. So negative three. What's the easiest number between negative square root eight and positive square root eight? Zero. Zero. Right. I should have done this earlier. I'm so getting rusty. I'll put those in blue. Those are my test subjects. My test numbers. Now, what do I do with those numbers? Y'all are gonna love this. Plug them. Yeah. <laughs> do you guys happen to remember I showed you where, like, you could set x equal to something in your calculator? And just break that this yeah this is this is why I have that is when you have something this long it's easier to do that but whatever whatever works for you so yeah we've got to take this whole big old thing right here and we've got to plug in uh, negative five negative three zero three five so give me a second. Negative five. Yeah, I mean, I'd heard that like when you got calculus. You know, the numbers, like, it, they were really difficult problems, but I think whoever said that's a liar. Right? 
very good. You're supposed to. Or I say, I'm, or you're correct. And I'm going to talk about that in just a second. Let me go ahead and kind of, I'm going to go ahead and write all this out for you guys. Since I can copy and paste that we're plugging in negative 5, negative 3, 0, etc. So again, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, write all that out. you can just plug this in your calculator and that's fine but I'll put it here so that you guys can see where everything came from okay Plugging in negative 5, check this out. You get 16 minus 25. That's a negative number. And the square root of a negative number is imaginary. So I'm just going to write here that we got a non-real number. And what does that mean then for this interval to the left of negative 4? So it is neither... And and because uh, our quest to talk about is it increasing decreasing. It, it's not doing either. It's neither increasing nor decreasing there because it doesn't exist right there. Uh huh. And I figured that out because when I plug in negative. Oh shoot, this is f prime. Let me write that in really quick. Um, because when I plug that into the derivative and I put it in my calculator, it says, what was what does it actually say on the calculator? Non-real answer? Division by zero. Shouldn't say division by zero. Well, don't. That, that, that wouldn't matter. Um, you plugged in negative five and you got division by zero? Oh, I see. Yeah, well, and, and think about this. That makes sense because remember what? How did we get negative four? Because it was division by zero. Really, as a really common use. That's very, and that'll give you all zeros and division by zeros. So, again, here, guys and gals, we got a non-real right there, which means that it's again not increasing or decreasing because it doesn't even exist to the left of negative four. In fact, just for funsies, let me pull up this actual thing. Let me show you here. x square root 16 minus x squared. What, what, where'd you go? There you are. Um, x on the square root of x squared. I've already forgot again. I'm getting old. 16 minus x squared. See, guys, look, here's what the actual function looks like. See, to the left of negative 4, it doesn't even exist. To the right of positive 4, it doesn't exist. And again, we can figure that out because when we do our work that we have to do, that we have to show, um, so I, I just put like a little X like that right there. That just helps me to keep up with that, like a big, or, you know, like strikeout or something. I don't know, that was stupid. Um, so negative 3. <laughs> All right. Um, does anybody happen to know what you get when you plug in negative three? Okay. And again, don't really care. Whoops. Don't really care. Yeah, exactly what it is. I just care that when I plugged in negative three, I got negative. Tell you what, as long. I said, let's, let's see here. It's on the test, if you'll write this out, and then you write maybe a not minus or a less than zero, something like that, as long as I see this and this, I'm good. Okay, uh, when we plug in zero, 
we get a we get four. Right? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, we get positive. And just for funsies, I'll go ahead and tell you that when we plug in three, we get decreasing. And again, here at five, uh, non real answer. So negative, positive. Negative, um, non real answer. So if this is like root f? f of negative 5, I do want you to show that you're actually plugging it in. Okay. Go ahead and write that out. You don't have to simplify it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't expect you to then write the next step of that. I need you to write this stuff, yeah. Or, again, or negative or less than zero. And here's the, re the reason why is otherwise, for the most part, you can just be like, oh, that's negative there. That's going to be positive. Like, it's just too easy to just look at the calculator. Yeah, it's always. So, now let's actually talk about where it's increasing and decreasing. And we'll be done for the day. I'll let you guys get done here about five minutes early. Oh, actually, about three minutes early. It's Thursday. <sighs> so, where's this thing increasing? Yep. Yep. Negative square root 8 to positive square root 8. Actually, I was wrong earlier. Um, technically... You could write this here. Y'all let me know, but I think you're home. I'm going to tell you, I'm good with just square root 8. You can let me know. I don't think the computer program is going to make you simplify that. Let me know if it does. Uh, where is it decreasing? Well, right here, right? So negative 4 to negative square root 8 and square root 8 to 4. 4 negative square root 8. When the bell rings, Miss Chapman needs to speak. The Beta Club members who are sophomores at break, please go to her room and bring your computers. And also, all juniors, please make sure you go to the glass conference room. MSU is in there. And, uh,